All right, Halos, welcome back. Uh, we are doing some more patch notes once again. We're doing patch 14.20. Uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> Drew wasn't able to join us today, uh, but that's all right. We are uh, a little bit late, uh, <laughs> like a week into the patch, actually, but uh, I just wanted to see if we could uh, sync up our schedules. It looks like it's probably not going to be able to happen this time around, but hopefully for next patch, that's all good. Uh, got a cool little like stuff here. I know it's like, a, what, the trundle esports fan or something they got some cool looking skins uh i think the kda fan or god that's funny uh but yeah anyways <clears throat> let's jump into the patch uh happy player day welcome 14.20 and then uh player days i'm not sure what that is exactly but yeah uh i've gotten some free stuff so definitely check it out uh if you haven't already um <clears throat> there's some really cool stuff just for playing the game like a bunch of different times i think it's like maybe 10 times or something um and you can get like a bunch of free stuff or something like that, so it's really cool. And I think there's a few more days, like three more days maybe, of stuff happening. Uh, there was a mid-patch update apparently for Nyla. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if there's going to be another one, because it says update one. And also, I don't know if their Nyla's... Is Nyla changed down here? Yeah, she was buffed, okay. <clears throat> so... I'll come back to Nyla then. Uh, here is the recap of everything, or like the highlights and stuff. So obviously that's the stuff to look forward to. Law player days. We got the <clears throat> Annie. Wait, no, it's anniversaries. I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how they say it. Anniversary. Yeah, anniversary. Cause it, cause it's silver. Anyways. Um, passing fi past 15 years of an amazing, an amazing journey, we're so honored by all the ways you've shared your love for the game, esport, and each other. Starting today, we're celebrating all of you and making getting a bunch of stuff. So yeah, 10 total days for rewards to unlock, play a game to complete a mission, complete a mission to get a reward. You know the deal. Uh, we get the Anniversary Mythic skin, Mythic Essence, and a bunch of other stuff. Really cool, actually. Um, you get this, which is decent. I like it. Uh, pretty decent amount of uh, blue essence, a mystery icon, 10, one, uh, 1,050 orange essence, which is actually pretty nice. Um, uh, anniversary emote, uh, five mythic essences, which is really nice too. And then uh, mystery emote again, and then we get 10 mythic essence. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm only up to day seven. I'm pretty sure that's only how many days there have been so far, but yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so we get a total of 15 mythic essence then. And then you get on day nine, anniversary skin permanent, which is apparently a mythic skin. And then you get the border and icon uh, on day 10. So that's really cool. I like it. looks like we got they got a Q&A that already happened and some other stuff. So yeah, let's let's continue on though. Um, a creative day, a music day, and an esports day. Cool. But anyways, uh, the Teemo, um, what is it called? ASU, I can't remember the, I can't remember what it stands for. But yeah, basically the ASU update, um, uh, new sound effects, new animations, and new voice voiceover. Oh, interesting. I wonder if it's the same voice actor or if it's uh, a new one. I'm not sure. Uh, new visual effects and stuff. So yeah, it's just kind of everything. And then of course they are moving some of these uh, skins to be up a little bit more pricey because they're making them better and stuff. But um, they obviously like kind of telling you ahead of time to get them if you don't haven't already, um, so you can get them cheaper. But <clears throat> yep, that has already passed. And then. Wait, what? Something from Broxa? Anyways, uh, ready check penalty adjustments. So, uh, last patch, some players received penalty deals that were too harsh when declining or missing the ready check due to a bug with the system. Um, the bug was causing players to progress through the tiers of penalties far quicker than intended to lead to long queue suspensions, even for minor offensives. Um, during patch 1419, we reduced the rate at which players were receiving more serious penalties for continually declining ready checks while we worked on a permanent fix with patch 1420 this should be issue should be now resolved okay cool as well as inappropriate penalties removed from accounts temporary hold on serious penalties will be lifted with 1421 and should return to functioning as intended our goal here is to prevent those repeatedly reclining yeah, yeah, okay, we got it. Uh, eight ranked. So Apex Duo MMR restriction will be turned back on this patch. To support better service performance, ranked ladders will now be updated every 10 minutes. Interesting. Uh, and then apparently what I heard is uh, they've actually made some things where it's like harder to climb as high. I don't remember exactly how much, but I've been hearing news about it. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, and then, anyways, moving on to champions, we've got Aphelios up first. So, uh, base health is going from 580 to 600. Not a big deal, but it is something for him. Definitely nice to be a little bit tankier. And then, his passive, the Hitman in this year, bonus attack damages, 
was 4.5 to 27, now it's 5 to 30, it's like very marginal, but hey, it's something. It gives them a little bit of a, a little bit more to AD, but not too much. And then Caitlin, she's getting a tax, tax fee ratio up from 0 0.61 to 0 0.625, which is actually pretty decent, and that's the ratio as well, which is even more meaningful. Um, so that's pretty nice for her. Attack speed is better to build on her than before now. And then Q built over Peacemaker. Uh, damage to secondary targets is now going to be 60% of total damage instead of 50%. So even better there on as well. So pretty nice for her. Uh, I don't think it'll like be a huge buff to her, but it's definitely some nice little touches that will help her along. <clears throat> uh, quirky... Q, Phosphorus Bomb, the mana, mana cost uh, was 80 at all ranks, now it's just 60, 65, 70, 75, 80 based on rank, so 60 to 80 um, based on rank, and then W, Valkyrie, maximum damage was, looks like the um, the flat damage is unchanged, but it's uh, instead of just 150% AP scaling, it now has 150% bonus AD scaling as well, so that's interesting. Uh, interesting. <clears throat> and then E Gatling Gun mana cost was 50 to 90, now it's 50 to 70. So <clears throat> just uh, really nice buffs all around him, actually. This is pretty meaningful, honestly. Um, but yeah, we'll see, I guess, right? We'll see. <clears throat> uh, okay, and then Dr. Mundo. Um, Mundo? Mundo? How do you say that? Uh, e Blood Force Trauma, the bonus stack damage that, that he gets. Um, it was 2 to 3.4 percent of max health based on rank. Now it's 2 to 3 percent of max health, so it's just a bit of a nerf, especially in the late game, uh, or like the once you get to higher ranks than the ability. Obviously, I don't remember what uh, ability he, he maxes to be honest, um, <clears throat> but I know his. E So sorry about that. Uh, my, my, my headset decided to turn off even though I was using it. That's interesting. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Anyways, um, so yeah, Dr. Mundo, his E is getting kind of like nerfed here. Um, I don't think it'll be a huge amount of damage, like less than before, but it's definitely meaningful and uh, it is a very nice tool that he has. I think he's actually pretty strong right now. Um, but obviously not like broke or anything. I mean, just depends, I suppose. But yeah, uh, he's good. Jin is getting a, an attack damage growth nerf here. It was 4.7, now it's 4.4. I don't think, <laughs> like they're rounding it to the fours. Um, <clears throat> I don't think he knew he needs a nerf, to be honest, uh, in, my, in my opinion. But he is going to get one regardless. So uh, our curtain call is also getting nerfed. The minimum damage was 64 to 244 based on rank. Now it's 64, 128 to 192 based on rank, obviously. Uh, so just a lot less flat damage there, um, especially with rank of three. Rank two definitely hits as well. Rank one, it's un unchanged, so not too bad early game at least. <clears throat> um, but he does scale pretty well, so it shouldn't matter as much, but still hurts him quite a bit. Uh, it's actually one of his weakest abilities, in my opinion, his R. <laughs> we'll see, though. <laughs> Anyways, um, the Lee Sin buff here is going to be his base at AD is going from 66 to 69, so... Really nice for him. It's plus 3 AD. Uh, really good, for sure. Um, yeah, just super nice for him. Mordekaiser, the Q Obliterate. The single target damage increase was 40 to 60% based on rank. Now it's 30 to 50% based on rank. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be dealing a little bit less, quite a bit less damage, but um, only on single targets spe specifically. So, uh, definitely, it definitely has hurt him a bit, but overall, I think he's pretty fine generally speaking, so not too big of a deal. Uh, Nyla, each slip stream, the cast time was 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, now it is instant. So yeah, there you go. Quality of life change kind of there. Um, all right, so that was the Nyla change, I guess, here. So let's go ahead and go into the uh, patch, uh, mid-patch update real fast, fast and check this out. So Slipstream looks like they got a nerf here, actually. Her E uh, was 65 to 165 damage uh, on it, and now it is 60 to 100 damage, so a lot less damage on that. Uh, I believe that is, actually, I don't know. I don't know if that's your second max or, or first or third max. I think it's your second, maybe, but I'm not sure. Uh, our Apotheosis damage over time was 60 to 180 based on rank. Now it's 60 to 140, and uh, the bonus 80 scaling is getting halved there. So it was 80% bonus 80 into scaling, now it's 40% bonus 80. That's pretty crazy. That is the dot um, as well. And then <clears throat> our apotheosis burst damage 
was 125 to 325. That's the same actually, but the bonus AD scaling was 120%, 120% bonus AD. Now it's 100% bonus AD, so quite a big nerf there as well. Uh, our apotheosis maximum damage also getting nerfed. So the rank one, it's um, unchanged for the max damage, of course, here. At rank two, it's down by 20, and then at rank three, it's down by, what, 660? No, 40, 40, sorry. Um, down by 40. And then also the bonus AD scaling was 200%, which is pretty crazy, actually. And then uh, the bonus AD scaling now is only 140%, so quite big nerfs, actually, to Nyla. I didn't think she was that strong, to be honest, but all right. Um, <clears throat> bug fix. Minion targeting. I fixed a bug that caused various champion's abilities, champion abilities to be castable on minions when that should not have been the case. We love you third caster minion, but you didn't need Zillion's ultimate that fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I heard... Uh, Heard some stuff was happening in, in the, what was it? Uh, oh my gosh, what's the PBE? Yeah, the PBE. Anyways, uh, okay, that's pretty big nerfs for her, but I don't really play that much, so not too big of a deal, I think, but still pretty large damage nerfs. Um, <clears throat> Pantheon, the W Shield Vault is getting buffed. I hate this, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, it was 5 to 7% of target's max health um, based on rank, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and then it had scaling with AP and Pantheon's bonus uh, health. Interesting. Um, but yeah, only the flat um, percent target maximum health damage is going up. So it's going up by 1% basically at every single rank. Exactly. So what well, is now 6 to 8% based on rank of target's max health, which is pretty nice for him for sure. Uh, in terms of damage. And then Poppy. So we have passive Iron A Ambassador. The cooldown was 13, 10, and 7 at levels 1, 7, and 13. And then now it is 16, 12, and 8 seconds at levels 1, 7, and 13. So um, up 3 seconds rank 1, up 2 seconds rank 2, and up 1 second at rank 3 of this passive. So definitely hurts her a bit, but <clears throat> it makes sense. She is really strong. And uh, yeah. I think it might, could be kind of rough because you're nerfing her top as well, unfortunately. But um, yeah, it kind of sucks for her. Q Hammer Shock damage cap versus monsters was 30 to 150. Now it's 50 to 170. So she's getting a buff uh, in the jungle for her Q, which is nice, definitely. And then the E Heroic Charge damage was 160 to 140. Now it's, or sorry, 60 to 140. Now it's 50 to 130, so pretty decent amount of damage off of her E, but that makes sense. She is pretty strong as well, so that is pretty strong um, damage ability for sure. Uh, but yeah, definitely some hurt, nerfs to her, but I don't think that'll really take her out of support just because of those reasons, to be honest, but maybe we'll see, I guess. Uh, Riven. So her Q broken wings, uh, the damage <clears throat> is getting changed. Uh, so the flat damage was 15 to 95, now it's 45 to 165, which is large, but she is losing a lot of um, AD scaling on it, it looks like. So um, it was plus 50 to 70% of total AD, now it's just 65 to 85% of bonus AD. So she, she, I believe this means she'll scale a little bit better, but I could be wrong. Um, so she was strongly bound to Eclipse, which was one of the most nerfed items last patch. Um, went Riven to feel comfortable stacking damage, so we're giving her Q Better Q damage as long as she keeps building long swords. So yeah, as long as um, you're building a more AD, it says it'll be stronger at level nine spike. Um, so yeah, there you go. And then they also changed the recommended runes. Uh, instead of alacrity, they got haste. And then instead of last stand, they got cut down now. And then Nimbus Cloak is getting changed to Gathering Storm for just her recommended runes, obviously. Uh, Bloom Plating getting to second wind and then unflinching to shield bash. Kind of makes sense, I think, overall. And then Shivana is getting some changes here, it looks like. So Burnout, her W, move speed, uh, the f normal percent is unchanged, but the scaling is 2% less per 100 AP. So it was plus 12% per 100 AP, now it's plus 10% instead <clears throat> per 100 AP. And then her E, Flame Breath, Dragon Form, Ground DPS, uh, was 60 to 120 at levels uh, 6 to 18, and then now it's 40 to 100 at level 6 to 18, and then uh, that's plus 15% bonus AD, plus 20% AP, now it's just plus 15% bonus AD, and plus 20% bonus, oh, so that's unchanged actually, the, AP, the scalings. Man, I wish they'd make it scale less with the, uh, the AP actually, that would be good. 
But yeah, all right, and it's interesting. Uh, yeah, our dragon's descent is also being changed here, so it's gonna be losing 30% um, of the AP scaling. So there you go. Uh, nerfing her AP a little bit, but it's not really, it's not enough, I think, in my opinion. But yeah, definitely at least something, so that's good. And then Singed uh, is getting here his base stats. The armor growth was 4.7, now it's 4.2. So nerfing him a little bit extra as well. Uh, Skarner is getting passive threats of vibration. Max health damage was 5 to 11%. Based on level now, it's 5 to 9%. Uh, so definitely nerfing him a bit, especially in the later bits um, of game. And then the E Ishtal's impact. Impact, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see. The flat damage is unchanged, but the plus percent of Skarner's max health is, was 8%, now it's 6%. So, uh, yeah, nail, ma nerfing his uh, his percent max health damage pretty much overall, overall all around. Um, but that one specifically on his E. Not completely all around, I guess, but yeah, in different areas. And then Tristana, the explosive charge range was 525, now it's 550. And then our buster shot is the same thing. Range was 525, now it's 550. So that's because um, there's... Uh, her level one spell ranges were increased to match her attack range, which we're fixing in this patch. So that's why they're changing that. They're making it a little bit better. They said they delivered a micro patch for Tristana a couple days after 1419, which is live, and it looks like with crit strike builds, she's performing just about right. That's interesting. I actually didn't know that. Um, so they did do a micro patch. I kind of wonder about that real quick, actually. Hold on. Let's uh, let's check that out real quick. Sorry, uh, flashbang for a second. Did they put it in the notes? doesn't look like they put it in the notes. Usually they put it at the top, so that's interesting. I wonder what that micro patch was. But anyways, um, let's go to Trindamir. So he has his attack speed ratio getting uh, buffed here and the armor growth. So attack speed ratio was 0.67, uh, and then now it's 0.694. So pretty decent amount up, and that is the ratio, of course, which is good, meaning his attack speed that he builds is even better. And he doesn't ha have any built-in attack speed as well. Um, and then armor growth was 4.3 to 4, and now it's 4.8, so that's really nice for him. Uh, getting a little bit tankier, and then not too much though, but a little bit. And then uh, his attack speed ratio going up quite a bit, it's nice. Udir is getting some nerfs, I believe. So his Q Wilding Claw, Awakening to Q damage against monsters was 20 flat, now it's 15 flat. And uh, I believe, yeah, the scaling, AP and AD scalings are unchanged here. Um, so it's just five flat uh, less than before for his awake awakened Q damage against monsters, and then E Blazing Stampede. The bonus movement speed was 30 to 65 based on rank, and now it's 25 to 55. So down by 10 at, at max rank, and then uh, down by five early, obviously. So pretty pretty nice, but it is um, I mean obviously not nice for him, but really really good nerfs for sure, because uh, that's definitely one of his most strong parts of the kit. And then our Wingborn Storm is also another pro strong part of this the kit. Uh, Awakened our damage against monsters was 10 to 50 based on level, now it's 5 to 35. So he's just kind of nursing him a lot in the against monsters, which is kind of interesting because um, yeah, I guess they're tar targeting his jungle as much as possible and leaving his top lane untouched. But um, that's interesting because I feel like that'll just mean that most people will take him top instead of jungle then, um, which is not ideal for a player that doesn't like to see him in lanes, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, he is pretty strong, so I'm glad they are at least nerfing him, um, so that's good. Vagar, W Dark Matter, the uh, AP scalings go down here, interestingly enough. I'm surprised that they're nerfing Vagar, but interesting. Um, so yeah, the AP scaling was 70% to 110% of AP based on rank, and now it's 60% to 100% of AP, so it's basically down by 10% AP scaling at every rank, which is pretty significant significant, especially with how much AP he stacks. Pretty substantial. So, a bit of a nerf for him, but overall it's not going to be that, I mean, big of a deal. It's just um, definitely less damage overall. And then Yasuo and Yone are getting buffed for some reason. I don't know why, because they are showing up at Worlds, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> so they should be being nerfed, but what, whatever, I guess. Um, especially Yone. Um, but anyways, uh, Q steals Tempest. The critical strike damage was 80%. Now it's 90%, and it says now matches basic attacks. So I'm assuming that's that wasn't the case before or something. So interesting. Uh, our last breath, also the bonus armor penetration on crit strike was 50%. Now it's 60% as well. So best, better stuff for crit 
crit building, of course. And then Yone, uh, his Q Mortal Seal is also getting the same change. Critical Strike damage was 80%, now it's 90%, which now matches basic attacks. So yeah, um, yeah, interesting. Kind of annoying that they're buffing them, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, ADC Adams getting another pass, unfortunately. Um, Essence Reaver is getting a bit of a recipe change. Uh, let's see. Two Cloak of Agilities, it looks like. No, no, I'm, I'm lying. Uh, Pickaxe, Caulfield, Wardhammer, and Cloak of Agility. So Pickaxe instead of BF Sword, I guess. But yeah, um, the price is actually going down, which is really nice on some of these. Uh, this one was 3150 now 2900 gold. So down by 150 gold, which is really, really good. And I really like this item. It's actually pretty strong. Uh, attack damage was 65, now it's 60, so you are losing 5 AD and 5 ability haste here. So it was 20, 20 ability haste, now it's 15. Pretty rough for the item, but at the same time, you are getting it a little bit earlier, which is nice. Um, and they were playing on their it anyway, so it could be worse, honestly, but yeah, it's, it's not ideal for sure. Uh, the collector is also getting nerfed here. The attack damage is going down by 10, which is pretty large, to be honest. But it's going down. The gold price is going down by 450. So it was 3400. Now it's 2950. So I think, I mean, honestly, not really, but it's kind of worth it um, in some ways to at least get the item with the passive and everything, specifically. So yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, static shiv was 40% attack speed. Now it's 35% attack speed. So they're nerfing that finally a little bit as well. Uh, I think this item is still pretty garbage, to be honest, um, sadly. So I don't think people should be buying it, to be honest, but people still do it. <laughs> uh, Yuntal Wild Arrows is getting uh, cheaper as well. So the price was 3,200 and now it's 2,950. Obviously the new recipe at, uh, item recipe is getting changed as well, but 250 gold cheaper is really nice for it. Um, and then attack damage was 65, now it's 60. And then the serrated edge damage looks like it was 70, now it's 60. I believe that's the passive damage that it gets, um, like on hit, basically, if you crit. Uh, or it's the damage over time, I think it is. Something like that. But yeah, anyways, I think this item's actually really bad since they nerfed, uh, since they took it from like a scaling amount of uh, total AD or bonus AD or whatever it was, and now it's just a flat 70. I'm pretty sure this item's just pretty bad now, unless you like getting it as your fifth uh, fifth item, something like that. I'm not sure. But yeah, um, items, Faded Ashes, damage per second to monsters was 25, now it's 20, so they're nerfing that a little bit. And then same thing with Leandry's Torment, damage per second to monster cap was uh, 50, and now it's 40. Um, a little bit different, but pretty much the same thing. And then Luton's Companion is getting, um, I think, nerfed overall, if I, I looked at this correctly. So yeah, interesting. Um, so if the fire damage was 60, now it's 75 flat. So it's getting up by 15 damage flat, which is not much, but it's something. And then uh, it was plus 4% AP scaling, now it's plus 5% AP scaling. That's a decent amount um, of damage, but still not that much. It's like 1 per 100, right? So it's not a lot. Um, you're getting like 3 extra damage for 300 AP, right? Not great, but something. And then it says the repeated fire damage was to 50% of initial damage. Now it's only 20% of initial damage. Initial damage, so it's uh, getting heavily nerfed in the repeated fire area. And then maximum single targeted damage was 210 plus 14% of AP. And now it's 150 plus 10% of AP. So overall, it's just a lot worse, I would say, um, from what I can tell. So yeah, it's a big nerf to Ludens, which is sad to see because it was already kind of a bad item. But uh, this just makes it so much worse, so kind of sad. And then Storm Surge uh, is getting down, ability power going down by 5, which is okay. Uh, not too bad. And then Squall damage was 150 plus 15% AP. Now it's 125 plus 10% AP, so big hits to Storm Surge's damage as well. But it was a, a really strong item um, after last, last patch, so yeah, understandable. Uh, Alright, and then Thorn Mail is getting the armor down by five, not that big of a deal, but something. Um, so yeah, it was 80 armor, now it's 75. The thorns damage is also getting changed a little bit here. So it was 15 flat, and now it's 20 flat, but it was 15, plus 15% 15 bonus armor scaling. Now it's just plus 10% bonus armor scaling. So basically it's worse later game, but um, early game it's probably a little bit better overall. Um, but yeah, overall it's a, it's a nerf for sure, obviously on Thornmail. But that's fine, it's still a good item, uh, definitely. 
and then runes. So they're changing some stuff around here a little bit. Uh, phase rush, the ranged move speed was 15% to 40% based on level. Now it's 18.75% to 37.5%. So um, yeah, it's a little bit better early and a little bit worse late, basically. And then melee move speed uh, is unchanged, 25 to 50%. 50%. Uh, and then grasp of the undying, healing is getting changed around here a little bit so it was three flat plus 1.2 percent of max health now it's 1.3 percent of max health and it breaks even at 3,000 max health apparently um and then max health per stack is uh was let's see seven for melee and four for range now it's five for melee and three for range so uh definitely a nerf there for sure nerf by two two max health for melees and one max health for ranged so yeah, it's kind of unfortunate the hitting grasp, honestly. It was a pretty good rune, and I don't know if it's good anymore. But it's definitely something. Um, it just doesn't seem like that much, personally. That is only the healing, of course, that is getting nerfed, I guess. So that's interesting. Um, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. We'll see, we'll see. Anyways, uh, Nimbus Cloak. Uh, decaying bonus movement speed was 12 to 35 percent based on summoner spell cooldown, and now it's 14 to 40 percent. So getting a, a nice buff there actually on Nimbus Cloak. So there you go. Decaying bonus movement speed. There you go. There you go. All right, and then uh, Aram changes obviously. Definitely pause to read if you want, or go ahead and check it out yourself. Uh, Ultimate Spellbook is uh, back since last patch, so we've got some stuff changing here a little bit. Uh, looks like they've nerfed some. Bonus armor scaling and stuff like that, so that's interesting. Um, but yeah, World Clash is, I think, happening... Yeah, it happened this last weekend, I think. Oh, wait, no, no, it started opening last weekend, but it's going to be October 19th to 20th, so that's a big one. Definitely get some, some stuff in if you have the time. Definitely good. And then bug fixes, fixes are happening. Mythic Shop Rotation is going to be right here, so uh, definitely grab that stuff if you haven't already. Um, if you are interested at least and then bug fixes and quality of life changes definitely check that stuff out just to make sure and Let's see Upcoming skins and Krobas. Yeah, so we have the music fan Gragas, uh, cosplayer Nico and then esports fan Trendle. So that's pretty cool <laughs> Look at these guys looking pretty nice and then we've got the Genesis Nightbringer Yasuo Which is looking pretty slick as well uh so yeah, lots more Yasuo is probably incoming. And then you've got the Anniversary uh, skin here, which looks pretty basic, to be honest. It's kind of, doesn't look that great, but maybe in game it's better, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of cool though. It's got some icon stuff there and some interesting looking things. But yeah, all right. Uh, other than that, I think we've we got a Maid Poro there. I just saw, look at that, the Lee Sin, I think, or no, is a Heimerdinger? pool party skin but yeah anyways uh pretty cool there and then we got the chromas of course so the end game for those three uh, f uh what is it called fan day was it I, it said at the top i think player day player days that's what it is yeah player days uh skins so yeah other than that um that's pretty much it for this patch thank you guys for watching um hopefully you guys enjoyed and we will catch you in the 14.21 patch if you haven't been already watching obviously we are still doing uh some uh, or at least I'm still doing some worlds coverage here and there. Uh, I've gotten some like predictions in and some reactions and stuff, so definitely check that stuff out if you haven't already. But without further ado, thank you for watching once again, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.